The title race is hotting up. Who do we think is going to win the league? This is the Premier League show. It's the view from the south, an AFC Bournemouth perspective on all things that's going on in the top flight. Welcome, my name's Sam. My name's Tom. This is Back of the Net, we're a Bournemouth fan channel, but we're gonna give you five points in this video about what happened this weekend, the major topics, the main talking points, but first, should we have a look at the Premier League table? This Ooh. is where it's at, Liverpool. Mm. Dropping points. I mean, it was against Arsenal, but look at that. It is getting tight is. at the top. From a Bournemouth perspective, we're doing all right in mid-table. But at the bottom, Tom, I tell you what, it's nice to have some stuff going on top and yeah. bottom of the table, isn't it? Yeah, I think if you're if you're a neutral as well, I think it was a good weekend because, as you say, it's hotting up at the bottom. Um, obviously, there's a few points deductions and stuff but that could come into play even more so. But at this moment in time, it's, it's tight down there. And then at the top, I mean, it's really heating up. I think most neutrals would have wanted an Arsenal win because it just keeps it alive. Mm keeps it really, really interesting. And, and to be fair, even even in the middle, you're going, can anyone get sucked in? Can anyone go on a run for Europe? It's it's all quite exciting at the moment, considering we're in February, there's a lot to play for still. So these are the results, as you can see. It was a decent two at our last minute goal Ooh, for yeah. Everton against Spurs. But I'll tell you what, I mean, is it a derby? They say it <laughs> is. There's a lot of rivalries between them, but Brighton smashed Crystal Palace, 2-2, coming back from 2-0 down mm. for Burnley, pretty good for that. I mean, I mean, that was a decent game. 4 all <laughs> at St James's. What? What a game that was. And goals galore at Bramall Lane as well. Alas, none were for the Blades. On the Sunday mm. then, we know, we were there, 1-0. Uh, Dean Court for Bournemouth v Nottingham Forest. Former Cherries manager, Gary O'Neill, <laughs> fair play. 4-2 at Chelsea, 3-0 to Man United over West Ham. A scoreline, which after we played West Ham, probably doesn't surprise me. And then in the big game, Arsenal beat Liverpool as well. And then on the Monday, Manchester City did what Manchester City do. They are breathing down the necks of Liverpool, aren't they? Beating Brentford. But we noticed five points in particular, as we said. And the first focus is mm. on Aston Villa. Yes. Are they in the race. I mean, there might be. Yeah, I mean, that's a bit of a topic at the moment because points-wise, if it was any, if it was Man United yeah. on them points, if it was Chelsea on them points, even if it was Newcastle on them points, I think there'd be a little bit more chat about them being in a race. I think people are anticipating them dropping off. But why? They, I know, because they've just won 5-0 away from mm. home. So you kind of have to put in the conversation, listen, I think I don't expect them to win the league. I do, I do expect them to drift off. I think they'll be well happy that they're in a top four race and probably the favourites for it. Their form is patchy though, isn't it? It is. And yeah, I, I think also, I mean, they, they probably should have enough to rotate and still do well in Europe in the Conference League. But that may play a part. Um, and we'll, we'll see how they get on in, in the other cup as well. But I just, I don't know. I, I think it's going to be between them and Tottenham for fourth, personally. But... I just think we've got to mention the fact that they don't get, they talk about a tight race and everyone just puts the top three up and you go, well, hang on a minute, they mm. are there. And I know Sheffield United are not great mm. at the moment, but they absolutely tore them apart. Every time they went forward, they looked like a score and they did on a number of occasions. Douglas Ruiz in the middle of the park is is one of the best midfielders in the league this season. Ollie Watkins is one of the best strikers. Yeah, so, so you look at them two and go, you know, and then defensively they've they've got they've got some solid players back there. Emmy Martinez officially is the the best keeper mm. around. So, yeah, and they've got a manager yeah. that's won stuff. So I think you have got to still talk about them at the moment. And if they tail off, then you can say, you know, we always thought that would happen. But right now, Villa are in that race, and yeah, they were electric against against Sheffield United, and we'll see how we'll see how they kick on, mate. But when they have them games against the big boys. They've shown, they beat Man City, they mm. beat Arsenal. So, yeah, I think let's just be wary about writing them off yet. Secondly, is it time to say bye-bye yeah. to Roy Hodgson? Oh, Crystal Palace fans mm. are not particularly happy. There's big uh, fan accounts like HLTCO that are saying he's got yeah. to go, he's got to go at half-time. Yeah. Obviously, to be frustrated like they were against their nearest and dearest yeah. at the Amex 4-1, wasn't a good look, but their form, I mean, it's been it's been really patchy. Yeah. I mean, they were out of the FA Cup. They got battered and bruised at the Emirates, which is not unexpected, I suppose. But then when you're only just sneaking a win 
fortunate. against Sheffield United. Yeah, fairly fortunate. And then you're going down four one. They aren't happy. They aren't happy. <laughs> and really, when you look at their when you look at their squad or when you look at their team, you've got a couple of standout players, but. Apart from that, just yeah. run of the mill. I think that's the concern. It's all all context. From from what I've seen, just reflecting back to us quickly, I thought we weren't actually we've had a good season and we weren't great at their place and won quite comfortably. I yeah. think, um, and it was noticeable that there was no Eze in that game, and it made a difference. And as as you mentioned there, I think the the Sheffield United win that they got was because they had Elise and Eze. Yeah. Um, you can lose to Arsenal, but there's way to lose game, and they were awful. And yeah, they just they don't look very good. And I think with with Roy Hodgson, you could always say it might not always be the best on the eye, but they don't let in many. Mm. Now that's gone. Yeah. Um, and then decisions. I mean, listen, that that game against um, at the at the weekend, they 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 lost the game at half time. Mm. They were I think it was three 0 at half time. Yeah. Wasn't it? Three 0 at half time. They lost the game, and they decided to bring Elise on, who obviously didn't start because he wasn't fit. Mm. He comes on the pitch and gets injured, and he's gonna be out for longer now. That is bad decision making. That's yeah. awful. Don't bring him on at three 0 You've lost the game anyway. Wrap him up in cotton wool. Yeah. Um, so bad decision making there. Obviously, once the fans turn and it's all a little bit toxic, you're only going one way, in my opinion. I think they might need a even if it's just a bounce. Um, I, I think most Palace fans, to their credit, were kind of saying, "Cheers, Roy. You, you made sure we stayed up yeah. last season, but off you go." They couldn't believe that you got another year. Vieira was probably let go for less. Um, and yeah, I just they've tried it before, Vieira and De Boer, when they mm. tried to look long term, and then they panicked, and and they resulted back to kind of you tried and trusted. So, I wonder if a Cooper someone oh, I was like about that. To say, I mean, but look, I mean, I was just looking at the league table. I mean, yeah, Bournemouth fans. I think most of us think we're having a pretty good season. Yes, we've got two games in hand. We're only two points ahead of them. Yeah, I know. I, I agree with that. But it's, it's what you're watching as well, um, and they've been pulled out because of some individual magic, whereas I think we are playing all right. They're fortunate that they're in the position that they are, because if they were closer to the relegation yeah. zone, I mean, they're not far away. There are other teams picking up points, which yeah. maybe is making them look over their shoulder a little bit, but they could but, be all right this season. Yeah, they still could be, absolutely. But I think you've got to remember, you know, Sheffield United and Burnley have been poor. Everton have had minus 10 points. Uh, Forrest have had to change manager because it wasn't working for them. So all these, they're very fortunate, mm. potentially a bit like us last season, that there's teams that are really struggling that's keeping them up there. But um yeah, it's one that I think, I mean, we'll probably come on to another, but I think at the moment, and I haven't looked, but I'm sure Roy Hodgson is the favourite to be the next to be gone in the Premier League, and that wouldn't surprise me. And I think what's happened as well is, say for us when we're on a bad run, we're going, yeah, but it's going to take time, this is a project, this is a long-term thing. It's not with Hodgson, it's not long-term. I mean, he ain't going to be there much longer anyway. Um, so, you know, it's just I think it might be time for a change. But I'm not a fan of saying a manager should go, but I think he probably should. And... There's one hand of me that looks at him and feels sorry for him, and then I remember Iceland. Yeah. Okay. Oh, God. Not, not a fan, mate. Third point mm. on Sunday. Chelsea were chaotic. They were crap. Wolves mm. were wonderful. Uh, what a win yeah. for Gary O'Neill. My God, man. My God. Yeah. Uh, you know what? He's taken me by surprise. I think even some Cherries fans were were not overly um, praising of him, even to Wolves fans, who sort of made them shit themselves for the season, yeah. thinking, what have we got ahead of us? And you know what? He was learning on the job at Bournemouth. Of course. He's learning at Wolves, but it's fair to say that that learning is now turning into good things on the pitch. And he's get he does get big results at big teams. Yeah. And, and listen, I think um, we'll talk about both these sides because I think it's it wouldn't have been fair to just say how bad Chelsea are and not give Wolves credit and equally it wouldn't oh, be yeah, oh, yeah. it wouldn't be right to not touch on Chelsea and how they are. But what I say about Gary Neal, because obviously we can talk uh, uh, from a better perspective in terms of we have Mills our manager. Sometimes managers just fit at different clubs. The same with players. I mean, we've literally seen just to keep it in to like topical, Morgan Rogers has just got a Premier League move to high flying Aston Villa because he's flying. He was, with all respect, absolutely atrocious for us. He was obviously only on loan and he was a backup player. He'd come on the pitch and you knew the game was over. Mm. But that's because it just didn't work. Whether it was Parker, whether it was just, just, just didn't work at that time. He was probably Parker thinking about it. Probably. <laughs> but he's, he's clearly a good footballer and yeah. he's showing it as another club. And I think Gary Neal, what I saw, a, it come up on my timeline, a um, uh, tweet from Wolves official account showing O'Neill. You know that the Wolves fans are trying to get him to go, hey, hey. and he's going, I don't want to, I don't want to, and the players are pushing him and he gives it some, and you think there's a relationship for, for, uh, form in there. Mm. Um, and it's good to see. It didn't oh, quite yeah. happen with us. We never really formed that collection. I was there every game he was there, and I hated it. It was really, really boring. 
what he's done, he's taken a bit of time away, and with the players he's got, it's working. It's working wonders at Wolves. Fair yeah. play to him. Um, I think. I think. And it's they develop a connection. Uh, and it, sometimes you don't. I don't think. I think we struggle to develop a connection with a manager since Eddie Howe. We struggle with uh, Tindall was obviously COVID. We struggle with Parker. You know, we struggle with O'Neill, and we found like we feel like we're finding it with Andoni. Wolves never got it after Nuno with Bruno Lage. No, of course, Lopetegui. Like, yeah, didn't really have it. Um, and they respected Lopetegui, but there wasn't that. Con- I think they formed a connection there, and fair play to them. And that's, I mean, whatever place Chelsea are in to go away from home mm-hmm. at the bridge and get four. I can't start talking about boring football when that happens. I think he comes across very well on camera as yeah. well. By the way, uh, I think, yeah, I think absolutely super. But. They have got players that they've paid a lot of money for. They've got world-class players. I think, so something yeah. that you perhaps didn't have at Bournemouth. Yeah, I think that's probably... You know, I think Wolves should give themselves more credit in the sense that you've got a better team. Yeah. In terms of better individual quality, as you said, I think Neto, they do bloody well to keep hold of him. What a, he's just ridiculous, that player. Um, I, to their credit, they're missing Huang at the moment as well, who's been good for him. But also Cunha, I think people are saying, you know, he is getting the best out of him to his credit. He was 50 million quid from a flat Madrid. Yeah, yeah. He is a top, top striker. But, to O'Neill's credit, he's, he's making it work for him. And I think when you've got players like Cunha and Neto in your team, you bloody make sure you get a system that gets the best out of them two players. And that's what he's doing. Defensively, they look pretty sound as well. But um, probably a good time to play Chelsea. Just going on to them a little bit. I don't know what's going on. Is I'm starting to go, is Poch as good as I thought he was? I don't know. Because I thought, it, it, we've done shows like this before where I've said I think Poch is the right man to get it out of them. And now I'm going, ooh, is he? Because it's just every week they're crap. Yeah. Um, they've obviously gone young. They've gone long term. They've got players on ridiculous contracts. But oh, it, just, it doesn't look right. He's doing the same thing that's failing. And he's, ev- got to be, he's got to be going soon. But I think, obviously, his track record is keeping him in the job. Yeah, probably. And who else is out there that would take that kind of chaos that is around Chelsea at the moment? Um, there's a lot of hilarious talk about saying... Jose's about because Mourinho's now it would be hilarious if he went back for the third time but some it's not right um, not all on Poch I think it's, it's there's a lot of there's a culmination of things there mate but um, I think Nkunku being back could help them I think Cole Palmer's been good but the balance ain't right it's a bit toxic there at the moment and he needs they're in the League Cup final he yeah. needs to win that yeah absolutely agree that. with that right then point four it was a foursome game <laughs> full of fortune and Fortitude. It was four all between Newcastle and Luton. And sorry, what a game, by the way. Great game. What a game it was. And uh, you know, Luton four two at one point. I was thinking, hello, they can do it. But Newcastle being Newcastle, I think both sets of fans left St James's Park feeling disappointed. Luton thinking we were four two up. Yeah, it was the um, a, a bit like the the game we just mentioned. We've got to mention both sides, I think, because from a new car. Newcastle perspective, home to Luton, you've got to be winning them games. They're not in a great place at the moment. You know they've got to look at themselves. But from a Luton point of view, they, you know people thought if they're going to stay up, it's because they'd be nasty and nick a one nil. They're scoring four goals away from home at St James's Park. That's impressive. So they deserve credit for that. Barclay, As you said, a Barkley for England. I think Barkley is knocking on the door. Oh, I know what you mean. He's he really is. He just looks a different player and. I think I said to you, mate. I He's think, cool and composed on the ball. I, I think what this is also proving, you know, Barkley deserves credit himself, of course, is they've got a bloody good man manager because I've looked at, I've watched Barkley, obviously he's been around for a long, long time now. And it just, every time he went somewhere, you thought, he doesn't look like he wants to be there. They're not getting the best out of him. He's gone to loot and I thought, what a stupid signing that is. And the manager has done the right. And Andrew Townsend, by the way. Who's the manager? Rob Edwards. What a dream, boat. What a dream. You take time. I'll do the talking. You take time to think about Rob Edwards. But equally, I could I could put, a, I know it won in this game, but Andrew Townsend was on TalkSport, retired as a footballer. Mm. And he's got the best out of him. So yeah. Rob Edwards, I think, deserves a lot of credit. I think this game had two really good managers. Obviously, we know about the other one. But yeah, I think, as you said, on one hand... Newcastle go, we've got to be beating Luton at home. Mm. Disappointed. Luton will be going, you've got to be winning when you're two goals up. But equally, Luton would have taken the draw before the game and Newcastle were two goals down and didn't yeah. lose. So, positive for Newcastle. Harvey Barnes back, massive for them. Scoring as well. Had him out for a long time. Yeah. A negative. Again, Anthony Gorn has left on crutches. How yeah. do they get these injuries? It's well, you know what? Eddie always had it 
uh, Dean Court as well. I just wonder if it's so overly intense. Apparently, High around intensity. independent ass assessors and yeah, stuff yeah. monitor the training and and say no, you know, it's no different to any other club. But you know, the amount of ACLs that we had and the yeah. amount of injuries. I mean, their their injury list is not desirable. And are you are you worried, Freddie, job wise? Um, I I mean, I, sh I don't think I should be because I think it was absolutely madness. But I think he's unfortunately set the bar high by overachieving in his first season. They never should be getting in the Champions League straight away. Mm. He did that, so he's raised the bar, and there's no way he would have taken it out of this season's gone. No. The injuries are mad, but a lot of teams have had injuries, us included. It's just not quite happening. I mean, but look at the players that they're, 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 they're playing, like Dubravka in goal, not the first choice. No. Longstaff, Lewis Miley, what, 17, has he even yeah. turned 18 yet? Jacob Murphy. Uh, yeah, and you know Almiron, who uh, like a couple of seasons ago, Newcastle fans mm. want him out the door. So it's not like they've lit... I mean, no. they can't because of FFP and stuff. They can't spend like overly big, but they haven't got like world club... I mean, no. you'd, you'd look at Bruno. Yeah, that's, that's the, the world-class player, I'd say. And Andy Gordon's been a good yeah. sign, obviously. I think, um, yeah, but they're missing a lot of key players now. I mean, Joe Linton, who Eddie turned into a key player, by the way, um, is out. So you think, oh, if Joe Linton's out, you need Willock, because they've got that energy. Mm. He's out. And then you Isaac. go, yeah, OK. Oh, no, we haven't got Isaac. Well, there's Callum Wilson. Well, he's not 100% fit either. Oh, OK. Um, all right, well, at least we've got our main man in goal. No, Pope's injured. So, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of things, a lot of context behind it, and I'm always going to talk highly of Eddie Howe. I couldn't care less. I think he's a, a joke of a manager, um, absolutely brilliant. But I appreciate that at the moment there's going to be a little bit of pressure because it's just not quite happening for him. But all the credit in this game for me has got to go to Rob Edwards. Yeah. And a player I really like, and I liked him in the championship before Rob Edwards. You know when we, we actually lost him when we got promoted? Yeah. Adebayo. Adebayo, yeah. There's I something about him, that, I, and I didn't realise he's actually quite a good age as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he plays with quite a lot of experience, he's powerful, he's big and strong and like a target man, but I think he's got a bit more about his game, so yeah. he's one to watch and I think he could be the difference and keep them up. I hope they stay up. They, they will, stay up. they will. Finally, Arsenal fans, you excited? 3-1 <laughs> over Liverpool. It was, I tell you what, it was a match where, um, you know, Liverpool like evening it up yeah. almost felt wrong. Uh, because I think that Arsenal actually dominated from from start yeah. to finish in that game, and you know, but for an own goal yeah. from from Gabriel, uh, you know, it, one, it would yeah. have been a three nil. Because I think Arsenal were fairly comfortable. Liverpool were at sixes and sevens, yeah. it seems. Yeah, I kind of before we get onto Arsenal because you know they deserve credit. Liverpool weren't on it. Liverpool no, were really, really poor. Yeah, I mean, they barely had a shot. I mean, they were really, really bad, yeah, which is stars. so unlike them. Um, and they will allude to, rightly so, no Salah, but let's... When's he coming back? I'm not sure. But in context, Arsenal didn't have Jesus, yeah. who I know is not Salah, but to Arsenal he is in, in, yeah. in certain ways. So, yeah, it was, it was a surprising game. I thought I thought Liverpool might have too much. I thought if Arsenal played well, they can get something. But the way the game transpired, it looked like you know, Arsenal were miles better than Liverpool, which was, which was strange, but Arsenal... Cre what was... What's your what's your point of view on this whole celebrating thing? Because I'm going to give mine because there's been a lot of so Erdegaard come out with a camera, didn't he? And yeah. like and they were celebrating like they won something and Arteta's oh, going mad and then you get the celebration police and I'm like, but it's got to go. Surely you've got to be if you can't be excited in this. We've already had the life sucked out of football with really? VAR where you can't celebrate properly oh, anymore. You score a goal. Celebrate! Yeah, you've scored a goal. It's you know, like it's a natural thing. It's a drug. It's a release when your yes. team scores. It's a release. You don't be, uh, you know. That's what I think. I don't. I don't like no. when people, um, yeah, shit on those kind of celebrations. Yeah, like like that, enjoy that's it. That's what it's all about. And all, no, I want to see more innovative celebrations, if anything. Yeah, and enjoy it because Arsenal have been for years have been told, which rightly so, but probably before Arteta. But be told that yeah, but in the big games they never got. They used to get always get spanked at Anfield. They get spanked by City, and you go, Arsenal are just so soft and pathetic in the big games. Now they're not, and they're doing well, and they're enjoying it. And they go, God, they're enjoying it a bit too much. Mm. Just enjoy it, you know, see the, what happens. The celebration, please, so the kind of footballing one did when they scored that last minute goal against us. It's like home against Bournemouth. Like mm. you know, context, like two 0 down, scoring the last minute in a title race. At the time, that was massive. It, it looked like it could be the deciding so, factor. Do one. Yeah, enjoy, enjoy yourselves, Arsenal fans. Um, you deserve to at the moment because everyone's written you off, myself included, thought, right, Arsenal not in a title race anymore. And you've bounced back with that. And that's, people talk a lot about the Arsenal mentality yeah. and that when it gets tough, Arsenal go missing. Well, I'll tell you what, as soon as everyone wrote you off for a title race, you went and beat Liverpool. That's a big result. And that's credit to Liverpool yeah. as well because we know how good they are. Do I think Arsenal win the league? Probably not. Do I think Liverpool win the league? Probably not. I do still think it's just something about City and Pep Guardiola. But... 
from a neutral perspective, that was brilliant for the league, yeah. Arsenal winning that. And I'm excited. And there was a few really good individual displays. We've all talked about Rice enough. I think Jorginho, who... Oh, what a game he had. <laughs> yeah. And then Havertz, I thought, had a good yeah, game. And I think you deserve to give them them guys credit who maybe don't get it uh, a lot of the time. And weirdly for Liverpool, they might have missed Conor Bradley. You know? <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, weird oh. one, but good for the league, mate. Really good for the league. Good for the league. OK, we're going to conclude with some official observations. Mm. Yeah, about a minute or so on this. And was there anything that we noticed in our game? Yes. Unfortunately um, so. Yeah, uh, the ref was abysmal in our yes. game, mate. It was stop-starty. I think she set a precedent really early doors yeah. with some of the decisions that were made. Uh, no qualms with the red. No, I'm not. Uh, no, there was no bias towards Forrest at one point. And should have been game. perhaps another red for us with Justin Cliver maybe getting away with it. Yeah, it didn't stop us winning the game. Don't but, get me wrong, we didn't God. deserve to. But yeah, unfortunately, really, really bad referee display. I think it was the most fouls and most stop start of any game in the Premier League this season so far. Statistically, I think the game was stopped in the second half every three minutes. Not surprising. Re yeah, really, really poor game from, from the ref, unfortunately. So we managed to see that one up close and personal. So that was disappointing. In terms of there wasn't it wasn't like a great deal of stuff this weekend. I thought oh. I thought that an interesting debate, because I think it's really people are 50-50 on it. Spurs Everton? Yeah, Vicario. Yeah. It was clearly a game player from Everton. Yeah. Where they kind of had someone blocking the keeper. And Was oh, there enough in it? <sighs> I always think the keepers get away with it. They get too much protection. Yeah. Anyone touches them. So I kind of like it. But equally, you're going, is it stopping him from getting it? It might be. But I rate Dyke having a go at it. Give it a go. If the, fa if the first half, the ref was given a foul every time, you just wouldn't do it the second half. I suppose keep it... Like it it's very difficult because when keepers are jumping for the ball and they're both, you know, both their feet are off the air, it's easy for a player to send yeah. off course. Quite it was easy. a clear game plan. It was. But... I but don't mind that. Wasn't uh, didn't I mean didn't Luton get given a goal recently where it was very similar and there was an incident on the keeper? I can't even remember what game. Might have been Ryer in the Arsenal game. Yeah, no, Ryan. it was um it was at home. I think they oh, drew uh, no against Burnley. I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah they yeah. drew one all, and there was a cross that came in and the keeper was. I mean, that was probably more of a foul if anything. Mm. Um, I, but I think this one yeah. goes to part. Nah. No, I kind of agree. I think if you're because I'm not being funny, but in the box. Like, a bit of that is never a penalty. Yeah. So why should it be a foul against the keeper? Yeah, the keeper's yeah. already got an advantage when the ball comes in. He can yeah. use his bloody hands. Yeah. Um, and Vicario, by the way, in my opinion, is the best goalkeeper of the league this season. Mm. I mean, I think he's been an unbelievable sign of Tottenham. What, more than Alisson? <sighs> I mean, he had a bad game, didn't he? Alisson's a better goalkeeper, but I think for a season as a whole, Vicario's been sensational for Tottenham. But I kind of think, no, you know what? Everton haven't, you know, they're not in a, they're not in a place to, you wouldn't expect them to get anything against no. Tottenham. Use that to your advantage, be a bit tough, you know, I'm sorry, but what the Tottenham defender, what I want my defenders to do, if I'm Tottenham, Romero is wearing the R-band, by the way, go, man, get off my keeper. Yeah. Do it, but you know what I mean, get off him. Yeah. Um, I, I don't mind that from Everton, and just make a point again, that we don't know what's going to happen with more deductions, but if, what I want to say is, Deitch gets a lot of, and I've done it as myself with Burnley, anti-football, Deitch yeah. ball, so boring. Every time I've watched Everton on telly, it's normally a good game. Yeah. And then when we played them, they yeah. were brilliant. Yeah, they were really good. They would be almost having a slight look at Europe if one for the deduction. Mad, isn't it? Mad. It's a fair play. And I now, because when they got the deductions, I kind of went, yeah, get Everton out of the league. And now I'm kind of like, I kind of want them to stay up. I yeah. don't know if it's because we've had deductions in the past yeah. and I kind of feel with them. And also, we usually do well against them in home games as well. So we'll at do. least we take points yeah. from them. But no, it was, it was one of them that's, I think, yeah, let us know in the comments. One for a debate. I think that's one that I can see the arguments for that being a foul yeah, and a keeper. Yeah. And I can see arguments for saying, get on with it. So yeah, interesting one of debate and I'm sure plenty will do it in the comments. Mate. That is this week's Premier League show. Look, we haven't been on in a while. Look, mm. If you're new to the channel and you would like more of this kind of content, if, as, long as, as long as it's not too busy in the yeah. AFC Warmer fixture schedule, we will pop this out on a Tuesday. So like, subscribe. We would truly appreciate it. And yep. no doubt, we'll see you next time. Up the cherries. Up the Premier League. Up the Prem. Up the chairs. Get in there. I can't believe I just said I like Deutsch now. Oh, <laughs> I need to sleep. <laughs>